Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I appreciate you stopping by, and of course, you got here just in time. That's right, just in time. What is it just in time for? You're just in time to see me do some maintenance, to, to, to get ready. We got a big journey coming up. We're gonna be putting a whole lot of miles on Trudy Thunder, and she's due for an oil change and the generator's due for an oil change. And we need some fuel. We're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do the fuel filters while I'm doing the oil change. And why am I doing an oil change? You're probably wondering. <laughs> Sticker shock. So the first time I had the oil change done on Trudy uh, was at the dealership down, the, the RV dealership in Houston uh one of those lessons learned i didn't ask i just said i need my oil changed and they did it uh and then they handed me a bill for almost uh 700 bucks thereabouts i was like ow and then i found some people local at a quick car loop they're not really set up to do it but they did it uh it, but it still cost me about 400 dollars uh i had someone a mobile mechanic lately or recently give me a quote and it was over eight hundred dollars and i'm like yeah for those kind of numbers i i think i can drain some oil and swap out some filters so that's what i'm gonna do and we're gonna start off with the onan 6000 qd quiet diesel i bought a, a kit for that so let's go do a, a change uh let's go service the onan diesel generator let's go service the generator you got here just in time that's right just in time for a 200 hour tune-up on the onan qd 6000 or 6000 qd it's a 6000 watt quiet diesel generator taking care of the generator is top priority so i found a kit this kit includes everything we need to to tune up the qd the diesel the generator this is an onan package it actually came reboxed. apparently this box came open but it includes three quarts of diesel i mean three quarts of 15w40 the generator takes just almost three quarts of an air filter, oil filter, and a fuel filter. It even included a wrench to take the oil, to change out the oil filter. So I've had the generator running for about 10 minutes now. You want to warm it up so the oil flows out real, real smooth. So let me turn that off and get set up over here we'll get we'll get greasy the first thing we have to do is get the old oil out before we can put the new oil in so here on the bottom of your onan 6000 the oil drain is right there it's clearly identified oil drain so that's a, a 10 millimeter Oh, and it's in there pretty tight. And we let her drain. Not sure if you can see it, but yeah, you can see it. We're right there. I think it's going to be easier to access if I take the front panel off because that's not we'll see i can't i can't hold the camera and do it at the same time though i was able to get it out without taking the panel off good idea to keep the <laughs> the oil catch pan under there though made a bit of a mess before we put the new filter in we want to get a, a little oil now a lot of times you'll see guys fill this up 
but since we're putting it in like that we're just going to put a little oil around the gasket That way we don't drag the gasket and just put it back in there. And there again, it's it's in a spot where I can't really even see, so I can't show you. And it's a long thread. Seems like it takes forever. So you need one of these. Either you, you need a pump or you need one of these long slinky funnels. Because it's right up there against the, the door, the top of the hatch door. When you're doing your oil change on your on your Onan QD6000, make sure you change the air filter. The one on your left is the air filter with uh, 100 hours on it. The one on your right is the brand new one. Looks like it doesn't take very long. Especially if you're running that when you're driving down the highway and your front tires are kicking up dust. Let me show you where this goes. Of course, it's, it's underneath. So when you're looking at the generator from the bottom, you'll see this grate and your air filter goes right in there. And it'll be covered by this. Now when you're ordering your tune-up kit, hold on, let me sit back over here. So make sure you wear goggles when you open that. So this, this is the fuel filter. And I didn't verify what fuel filter I had before I ordered my kit, so I now have the wrong fuel filter. I've got the square one, the rectangular. And it doesn't work with that setup. So now you know, and you won't make the same mistake. Change the air filter changed. We need to start it and let it run a little bit lesson learned make sure you double check that fuel filter on the generator before ordering the kit all right the next the next two projects and i'm still waiting on all of my oil change stuff to arrive and oh by the way the total cost for me to do all these oil changes because i'm providing the labor is is like 250 dollars thereabouts 
So one way to look at that is I'm, I'm making $600 today. <laughs> Changing my old oil, I'm making $600 today. Uh, and I also think it's really good for, if, if you have something like this, you really ought to be a little more intimate with it. Just so you know, in case you have a tr trouble somewhere, you have a kind of a clue. Now, I can't fix this thing. That's way, this diesel engine is way beyond my capabilities. But you know, if a rat gets in here and chews some wires and stuff, I, I can splice those back together. And some basic, if something comes loose, you know, I can tighten it down or better yet, tighten it before it gets loose. So uh, the air filter is the unique thing on this, this coach. Fortunately, we have a little pressure gauge here and it shows when the filter is needing to be changed and we're we're pretty well getting close to that now and, and part of that is because I, ha I i had another rat come pay me a visit built a nest and then i figured found out that the thing was trying to build a nest in the air intake so we're gonna pop out that filter and put in a new one there's a, a fuel filter that goes right there and then we have another fuel filter that goes underneath. That one's going to be a, a little, a, a little bit of an experience. Air filter's easy though. Famous last words. We're gonna move over to the that fuel filter, right? We're moving over to that. I gotta get a ladder. All right, these these little clips are pretty pretty simple. You push it on the back side, and it'll it'll release on all three of these. knob sticking out there that has to fit into just like that and then it locks into place and then we just put our all our stuff back on We are 
in like Flynn. Two fuel tanks. I guess that's why we have two fuel filters. But there's another filter here on this tank. I don't think the rear tank has a filter, but I'm going to double check. This one, we have to drain it. Just had to turn the little yellow thing counterclockwise. It wasn't even a quarter of a turn. So we'll let that drain and then we will open her up. The whole assembly just drops down. It's held in place with five five sixteenths screws. And so there are two two legs that go into receivers down here and it just slides into place. The little plastic piece that comes with the fuel filter fits right there. Just like that. Quite a bit of fuel in that little little thing. All right. Ha, I forgot all about you. I just came out here and went to work. I got the oil drained. I had the wrong size filter wrench, and so I had to run into parts store and get a bigger one. We're using a Wix filter. That is, there's the number right there, Wix oil filter. And we're, I'm also going back with Rotella T6 5W40. Extreme temperature. Because we operate in extreme temperatures here. All right, so let me crawl under here. I'll show you what I've done so far. While my neighbor's running his weed eater. Ah. It's pretty simple. There's, there's a plug right there. You pull that out. I have a 15 quart pan. The engine takes 15 quarts of oil. I'm also going to put a synthetic additive in there to make it a little, make it a little more slippery. Man, this, this, this has turned into a couple days worth of just a whole lot of projects. One of the things that we have found with Starlink is the, the, the cable. I think it's a 75 foot cable that's included. Um, sometimes it's not long enough, especially the last time we were out at Tranquility Base, we found that we needed another, you know, 25, 30 feet to get the best signal. You you can't just buy any cable. You can only buy their cable, and they're quite proud of their cable. But anyway, we invested because she has to, Yappy has to be connected. So we invested in a much longer cable. It's 150 feet. There it is, right there. But what we've been doing, because we use Starlink as a backup for her here at Tranquility, or here at this home base, we move Starlink in and out of the RV. But we don't need that really long cable here. So rather than running it through the window every time, I thought, well, I'm just going to permanently route or semi-permanently route this cable. And so I ran it uh, through here and under the RV. So there's a, this is the opening to my slide for all the wiring and stuff. Uh, so I ran Starlink through there. So that actually is under the bunk. And that cable comes under the cabinet and comes out right there. 
because that's where we usually have it set up. And maybe later on I'll I'll do something different. But for now, we're permanent. And we've got over a hundred feet of cable. We can get that antenna way out of the trees if need be. I've I've noticed over the last year that when we're set up and level the front jack is popping like it's bleeding off and then yesterday after we brought the coach here i got a an alarm that i'd never heard before when i picked that up out at, out at the, the storage barn the weird alarm <clears throat> And it turns out it was a, a jack. The, pat, the driver's side front jack was drifting down. Uh, well, that was weird, so I put it back up. Checked it in about an hour later, and it was back down. About that far off the ground. That's a problem. Lots of research on the internet, several YouTube videos, and... I identified two possible solutions. One, I think that there are two separate things happening. One, uh, Lippert has approved replacing a quart of hydraulic fluid with something like this. They had they identified three different products. This was the one that I I went with. I could get it here in 24 hours next day. It was like $30 for a quart. Anyway, uh, and, and as I was researching, whoever whoever installed this, they need, they need a good spanking. Several people had said is there's a Allen screw right here and if th that's your manual operation and if that is cracked open a little bit your jacks will bleed off so I tightened that up with an Allen wrench yesterday and it seems to have solved the problem of the bleed off but I'm going to replace some of the hydraulic fluid, a quart of the hydraulic fluid, uh, to see if I can resolve that popping noise. Now, what I meant by somebody needing a spanking is, can you see back there? There's a, there's a yellow cap back there. I don't even know how you're supposed to reach that. So if, if my fluid was low, I don't have any way to know. <laughs> There's no indication on there. And if it is low, if I do determine that it's low, how in the world do they expect you to get back? I mean, it's... it's. Well, and then there's this door that falls on your head. They did not intend for us to work on our own stuff. But this is the cap right back there. Since I can barely reach back there, I found this on Amazon. And according to the, to the ad, it works on any car that owns a dipstick. <laughs> and it's a little pump, a little fluid pump. We're going to see how well it works. Well, that, that's impressive. That little, that little pump's getting it done. Now I'm ready to go back the other way with it. Well, what started out is a couple of simple little projects on the magnificent Trudy Thunder turned into a lot of little stuff. 
So, so the oil change uh, was a learning, learning experience on both of them. Not that I, I don't know how to change oil. I've just never changed oil on a, a, a big diesel engine, big Ford diesel, or on an Onan generator. Now that I know the, the process and what to look for, it'll go much smoother next time. I did have a, an issue with the filter not being tight enough. You gotta get that filter really tight. Running the Starlink cable, so there, there were a couple things I did. I, I, I took the, the seal, because if you have a slide, it must back up. So after finishing the oil change, uh, it was, I was due to treat the slide seals so that they stay soft and pliable. And while I was doing that, I decided to go ahead and do all the window seals as well. Same product, you just put it on a rag and wipe the, wipe the rubber gaskets down. While I was doing that under here, I discovered I had two three inch screws. So they're, they're screws that hold the wall to the floor. Two of them had backed out and one was actually missing. So I tightened up the screws. Then I went on to run the, the cabling. Now, I'm not quite finished with that project because I want to figure out some way to better deploy that. Uh, and I'm not sure what, what that solution is going to be. i got a ponder on it. So I'm, I'm not quite finished, but I'm finished with it enough that we can, we can take it on the road, baby. Uh, but while doing that, <laughs> I read into three more projects. And I, I didn't mention this yesterday because I was it was just so much in the in the moment of resolving problems. So running that cable under the the kitchen counter, I actually found something that I, I didn't know existed in in my motor home. Because I'm I'm tall, I'm I'm always up here. There's a switch right there, and it controls. <laughs> I didn't even know I had that. Three years later. Anyway, so I discovered those. That was that was a positive. Uh, but as I was working down here, I had to take the air intake co vent cover off. That's for the furnace. I discovered that these two hose hoses that come out of the heater were not were had come loose back there. It's just a band clamp and apparently they had vibrated loose. Moving along, uh, I discovered an issue with that end of this bench was no longer attached. The screws had backed out. So after I got my cabling run, I had to refasten that, fix that issue, spent an hour working on those vents because you limited space and you can't see, so you're working blind. Uh, and when I, which required, to fix that, I had to take that drawer out. And then it took me, it took me a half an hour to get that drawer back in because it just wouldn't go into, into the track. I finally got all that done. That was when I called it a day. I'm done. So we are, it's a mess in here. I got to clean this up this morning. Uh, but so that that was the extra projects that came with the one simple running the cable that should have taken me 15 minutes because i've done that twice before with two other cables and it ended up taking me three hours because of all the little things i had to sort out while working on the doing the oil change I ran into the, I, I found that issue with the jacks losing and you know, falling down. I solved that. So if you've got hydraulic jacks on your, on your coach, 
go back in time to where that i showed you where that allen that hex head is and just tighten that down and your jack should stop bleeding off but it took me an hour's worth of research to do that and then changing out that fluid was another because that little pump doesn't get in a hurry but it was a lifesaver that took me another hour just the little stuff just kept adding and adding and adding so i didn't get to back to the project that is currently in work which is the airbags on the rear end you, you haven't seen that video so you don't know what i'm talking about anyway that video's that video's still in work we're done i'm done working on trudy for today for for now uh i've got parts on order for my, my the finalizing that project so we're gonna i'm gonna close this out and next week uh yeah next week you're gonna see a couple of campground videos we're, we're, i revisit a, a couple of places i've already been and by the time you've seen those i'll we'll be on the road for our grand adventure i'll tell you about that later and if you haven't already you need to go reserve your site at lake whitney state park horseshoe loop first weekend in february dillo days is coming all right i'm done i'll shut up i'll let you go finish your coffee i appreciate you watching if you've not already please click on that thumbs up blast me out across your social media if you found some value i create this kind of content all kinds of i'm a content creation machine kind of sort of anyway i'd be honored if you'd consider clicking on the subscribe button and if you've already done that thank you remember to hit that bell as well and for my patrons we are so grateful thank you so much you guys rock all right y'all come back now you hear